Boys and girls, we're back with episode two uh, of Discoverers at Home, and uh, it's really good. Oh, hold on! It's really good. Um, hello, Levi. Put, put the camera up. Yep, excellent. Okay, so let's start again. Boys and girls, it's really good to be with you uh, again. At uh, Discoverers at Home at season two, uh, oh, oh. season two um, of uh, Discoverers at Home episode two. Um, so yeah, it's really good um, uh, for you for you to be here. Um, so uh, let me tell you what's going on on this episode. So today we have Kezia trying to eat her hand. We have some bread. Steve finally growing some hair. And Sarah holding a book in a very weird way. Okay, I need to, uh, let me go and sort the camera out. Oh, yeah, I'll be back within a minute, boys and girls. sort this out. Levi, you're sacked. Right. There we go. Excellent. Ah, hey, right, okay. Whew, right, I've got that sorted. Um, that's good. So again, uh, welcome back. We've got exciting shows you've seen already. Uh, all the normal things. Uh, we've got our first challenge with uh, Sarah and Kezia, that's going to come up later. We've got Dennis time with Steve uh, as well, and uh, looking into the third gospel, uh, Matthew, Mark. So the next one must be, you got it, Luke. And uh, so that's what he's going to be doing uh, today. So uh, let's get into a song first of all, shall we? And uh, we're going to sing. Uh, it's one that I know you guys like. You like the actions. Um, I struggle a little bit with the actions still, um, so uh, very disappointed that uh, Kezia and Sarah aren't here to, to show us. Maybe one week uh, we'll get them to do the actions uh, for us at the same time. Uh, but it is your love, and uh, we know it lasts forever, doesn't it? And uh, that's a bit I'm always getting a bit confused with. So uh, let's start again, uh, Discover Us, and uh, sing this song.
still didn't quite get to manage to uh, get the actions quite right on that one. Uh, a bit more practice uh, needed on that one. So uh, uh, I have to do that one again uh, in the next couple of weeks. Uh, but it's a great song, uh, isn't it? Really great words. And it, it reminds us about God and his love for us. Goes on forever and ever. Never stops, does it? So here we go. And uh, this week uh, we've got... Uh, our next meal as well we're going to come up to uh, in a little bit. But um, what happened last week? What did they ask you to do? Well, there wasn't as much rain uh, as I was hoping there would be um, for what I asked you to do. What did I ask you to do? To send in some puddle jumping videos. And um, it didn't rain quite as much uh, as what I thought uh, it would. Uh, a little bit disappointing. Um, my shelves uh, are still looking a bit empty as well. So if you've got any ideas for me to uh, to put on there that you can see each week, uh, that'll be really good. Um, so because there wasn't a lot of rain, I managed to find uh, some people who did find some uh, water or big puddles. And uh, so I've just got a few clips uh, for you that have been put together uh, of some other people uh, who have found... Uh, some water this week. So uh, let's have a look what they got up to. There you go. I, if you did manage to find any puddles, I, I hope they weren't as deep as some of those. Um, but I have got somebody, uh, two or three people who did, uh, from you guys from at home at Discoverers, who did manage to find a little bit of water. And um, so, just so uh, we do know there are people watching, um, let's have a look at these. And uh, they did manage to find a little bit of water to have a splash around in. There we go. Thank you very much, um, uh, Pippa, Bonnie, uh, Caleb, and Zoe. Um, yeah, that puddle. <laughs> okay. Anyway, next time. So, what do we want to do next week? A little bit easier, I hope. So, we're going through meals with Jesus, uh, aren't we? We've had our first meal, a big bedding, wedding banquet, uh, where Jesus performs his first miracle, and uh, we know that he turned the water into wine didn't we and uh, so we've got another meal coming up in a few minutes so what I want you to do I want you to send in a photo or a picture that you've drawn of your most favorite food um, okay what would be the best meal that could be put in front of you that your mum and dad could cook um, or actually shh, don't tell anybody but McDonald's has opened this last week um, okay, um, your parents might have been keeping that a bit secret from you still, but it has opened. You can drive there and get a McDonald's. Um, okay, so that one might be one of your favourites. Um, here's a picture of me, Levi and Laban, just about to eat our Big Macs. That was just this last week, so uh, that was pretty enjoyable. But I wanted to send in a picture or photo of your favourite meal. What would you be 
most wanting to have put in front of you that you could eat uh, for your favorite meal. So that's gonna be for next week and you can send uh, those in. That'd be really, really good. So let's sing another song and uh, then we can get into the rest of today's episode. Jesus is the King, ruler over everything. Jesus is the one, promised one, the Son of God. Jesus is the Lord, He's the one you can't ignore. Jesus, Jesus, He is the King. He is the King. He commanded the fishermen, hey, come follow me. God, Jesus is the Lord. He's the one you can't ignore. Jesus, Jesus, He is the Jesus, is the King, ruler over everything. Jesus is the one, promised one, the Son of God. Jesus is the Lord. He's the one you can't ignore. Jesus, Jesus. So, uh, meals with Jesus. Now, thinking about food and talking about food does get you pretty hungry, doesn't it? Uh, feeling pretty hungry. I don't know what you've had for your tea or lunch today. I uh, hope it was good. I'm sure it was. Uh, but talking about food does get your stomach grumbling uh, a little bit, doesn't it? It really, really does. But um, I've got a bit of an introduction video uh, to today's meal. And uh, you'll be able to see that and uh, it's gonna give you a massive clue uh, to what meal uh, we're gonna have a look at uh, today. So uh, watch this video and uh, then we'll have a little think about it and uh, see what we can uh, learn from this meal that Jesus had with his friends. After this, Jesus went across Lake Galilee, or Lake Tiberius, as it is also called. A large crowd followed him because they had seen his miracles of healing the sick.
Jesus went up a hill and sat down with his disciples. The time for the Passover festival was near. Jesus looked around and saw that a large crowd was coming to him. Where can we buy enough food to feed all these people? He said this to test Philip. Actually, he already knew what he would do. For everyone to have even a little, it would take more than 200 silver coins to buy enough bread. Another one of his disciples, Andrew, who was Simon Peter's brother, said, There is a boy here who has five loaves of barley bread and two fish. But they will certainly not be enough for all these people. Make the people sit down. There was a lot of grass there, so all the people sat down. There were about 5,000 men. Jesus took the bread, gave thanks to God. distributed to the people who were sitting there. When they were all full, he said to his disciples, Gather the pieces left over. Let us not waste a bit. So they gathered them all and filled twelve baskets with the pieces left over from the five barley loaves which the people had eaten. Seeing this miracle that Jesus had performed, the people there said, Surely this is the prophet who was to come into the world. Jesus knew that they were about to come and seize him in order to make him king by force, so he went off again to the hills by himself. So here we go. I'm sure you know with the meal by now, don't you? Uh, very obvious uh, from that video. And uh, it's Jesus again uh, there, and uh, he is at a meal. Now, I don't know about the meals that you're having at the moment, maybe just three, four of you, um, maybe a little bit more, a little bit less, depending on how many are in your house. Uh, but 5,000 men, plus the women, plus all of the children uh, as well. And we know there was children there because, well, we'll find out, and you probably saw uh, as well, uh, didn't we? So let's have a look at this, shall we? So his disciples... Jesus and his disciples, they've just been around all the villages and uh, they've been preaching and probably doing other miracles uh, as well, uh, healing people and uh, things like that. And uh, here they are, they would have been very tired, they would have been, you know, looking for a bit of R&R, &R, rest and recuperation. And uh, Jesus tells them to get into a boat and they're going to sail off to a nice remote place and uh, have a bit of uh, time to themselves. And uh, so they get in the boat and uh, you can still see some people on the shore they probably recognized who jesus is and uh, they're thinking we want to hear more from jesus we want to hear more about what he's talking about and his teaching and uh, so they get to this place and you know what 
the people on the shore, well, they walked around and followed the boat and got to the place where Jesus is landing uh, again. And uh, so was the place remote anymore? Well, it wasn't at all, was it? There were lots of people there uh, already. Now, what did Jesus do? Jesus said, excuse me, look, I've come to try and go to a remote place. I'm tired, my disciples are tired. No, please go away. Did he do that? Of course he didn't, no, not at all. Uh, he had pity on them. He had compassion on those people. He didn't turn them away. He knew that they, those people still needed to hear the great news about God and um, how they can have that relationship right with him again. And so he actually welcomed uh, these people here. And you can imagine the crowd getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And uh, so I went to Sabbath, look, there's a lot of people here, go round, get them all gathered to sit down and I'm going to teach them and speak to them. And so that's what Jesus did. He spoke to them and taught them again. And uh, there would have been parables and stories and uh, many things telling them about how they can get right with God uh, again. Late in the afternoon, wow, one of the disciples come to someone and said, look, it's quite late in the afternoon now, isn't it? It's, we've been here a long time. So, um, should we send the people home to uh, go and get some food? Some people are getting hungry. Uh, well, what should we do? What do we need to do? Well, Jesus says, well, you feed them then. Uh, you need to feed them. And uh, they sort of, hmm, okay. Uh, so, we know about 5,000 plus women and where are we going to get the money to feed it? That is going to be a ridiculous bill that we're going to have to have. Um, we just, no, we can't do it. We cannot do it. It would take a fortune uh, to do that. Well, Andrew, uh, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up and this is where we know there's children uh, because uh, he bought a boy along with him. And what did he have? Well, he had five loaves and two fish. And, uh, well, five loaves, two fish, that's great for a picnic for maybe one or two people. But there was hundreds, there were thousands of people there that day, weren't they? Well, it was a start. Maybe we could just, you know, have a crumb, something like that each. Well, no, Jesus told his disciples to tell all the people to sit down in big groups uh, on the grass. And uh, do you know what he did? He uh, went down, uh, he gave thanks, didn't he? Uh, he prayed to his father and uh, gave thanks for this food. And then starts giving it out. His disciples start carrying it around and it just keeps coming and come in and come in and uh, people ate and there's a great word um, in the passage when you read it uh, in the Bible and it says all ate and were satisfied all ate and were satisfied none of them had too much and none of them had too little it was just the right amount that they all managed to eat everybody ate uh, until they were no longer hungry and at the end of it, Jesus, he tells them, bring back everything that's left over. And uh, can you remember from the video how many basketfuls uh, were left at the end? Uh, well, yeah, excellent. There were 12 basketfuls left over, uh, weren't there? And uh, another miracle that Jesus performed right there, not just in front of a few people at a wedding, uh, but in front of those thousands and thousands of people. So what does that tell us uh, about Jesus uh, again? This meal that he shared uh, with his disciples, his close disciples, but the thousands of people around. Well, I've already said the words. Um, there was pity, wasn't there? Jesus, when they landed on that shore, he had pity, he had compassion. He loved those people uh, there. He didn't want them to go away. He knew that they needed uh, to be taught 
and uh, they needed to know God and this great news. And then we see prayer as well, don't we? Uh, Jesus was a man of prayer. Um, we looked at that in season one, didn't we? The Lord's Prayer. But here again we see Jesus. He prayed to his Father in heaven. Uh, he prayed and gave thanks for the food that was just there. Just five loaves and two fish. But he gave thanks for it and asked God to bless it. And God did bless it because the next P uh, is provision. He provided for every single one of those people there, didn't he? This food just kept on coming. He kept on breaking it, handing it out, and it kept on going and going. Jesus uh, is a man who provides uh, as well. And that shows us, doesn't it, that with his pity and compassion and his love, with his prayer, with his provision, that Jesus was a man of great power, uh, great power that Jesus had. Uh, those people needed to know uh, that they can get right with God, didn't they? And that's why he taught them. But they also needed physical provision, didn't they? And Jesus was there uh, to do that uh, as well. What a wonderful God uh, we have uh, that he sends uh, he sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for us. But before he did that, he was able to do all these things uh, for all his people. So Jesus, he had pity and compassion. He was a man of prayer. Uh, he is a God uh, who provides for all our needs. Uh, not too much, not too little, just the right amount for each and every one of us. And uh, he is a God with great power, uh, isn't he, uh, to be able to do uh, all that. So, prayer, uh, pity, prayer, provision and power. And uh, so that is amazing, isn't it? What a great uh, God we have. So we're going to have a look at another meal uh, next week and um, see what happens uh, in there. But uh, before we go on to our next slot, uh, let's sing again a song uh, together. And uh, again, if there's some actions to this, I'm sure there is, I know there is, uh, you can do those uh, at home as well. So uh, here we go, uh, let's sing together. Kazera challenge, uh, the first one of this second season. And uh, I know the girls are raring to go, uh, the rivalry uh, between them uh, again, and uh, they've still got to stay two metres apart so they can't quite at each other yet. Uh, 
um, but uh, from a distance, uh, definitely, there's definitely some rivalry uh, there. So, are you ready for this week's challenge? Let's go over to Kezia, and uh, she's going to tell us what they're going to have to do. Hey, what's up, boys and girls? Welcome back to season two. Today's challenge, me and Sarah are going to be doing lunges, but we're also going to be balancing a book on our head at the same time. So we're going to see how many lunges we can do while balancing this book on our head. It's going to take balance, it's going to take strength and some other things. Okay, so are you ready? Here we go then. So, sounds easy, doesn't it? Some lunges, book balancing. Hmm, oh, I'm not too sure actually. I uh, don't think I'm going to even do one lunge without falling over. Uh, but anyway, so uh, the challenge, see how many they can do before the book falls off the head. And uh, so let's think, who should we go over to first? Um, I know, let's go over to Sarah and uh, see how she does and then straight over to Kezia. Hello, I'm ready for the first challenge back. Our discoverers. Okay, right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Are you ready? Count with me. This is going to be really difficult. <laughs> okay, right, concentration here. Phil, don't distract me. First lunge. Oh, my knee has got to touch the floor. Is that a lunge? Is that okay? Do you think so? Mm -hmm. Okay. One. Two. so much concentration. Four. Okay, I guess speed up a bit. Five. Oh, I'm getting confident now. Six. Seven. No. Eight. It's coming off. It's coming off. Nine. Ten. No, I felt it come off. Okay. I got nine. Let's see how many Sarah can do. There we go then, Sarah takes first blood. Wow, she won, she won last uh, season, didn't she? And she's taken an early lead um, in this season's challenges uh, as well. Well done, Sarah, and uh, really great. Uh, that is really good. So, uh, okay. I was just getting to that bit as well. He got in there just before me. Now, we all know, boys and girls, whenever we hear that whistle, that means that somebody is around, doesn't it? So, well, he's certainly not here. Hmm. I can still hear him. Ah, that must mean he's over there. Boys and girls. It's uh, really good to see you again this week. And uh, in Dennis time at the moment, we're thinking about the four people who wrote the four Gospels. So the beginning of the New Testament, there are four books all about uh, the life of Jesus, the things that he did, the things that he taught, uh, his death and his resurrection and ascension into heaven. And so far, we've met the first two. We've met Matthew and uh, Matthew, when he wrote his Gospel, he especially wanted us to know that all of the Old Testament promises have been kept and fulfilled in Jesus. And then there's Mark. And Mark wrote his gospel and he's kind of got two halves, two big questions. Who is Jesus? What is God's promised king? And why has he come? What is God's promised king who's come to die for our sin? And now we're going to meet our third gospel writer. 
and his name was Luke. Now Luke was a doctor, and uh, he he would have looked after people. But not only that, he was also a traveller because he travelled with the Apostle Paul as they travelled all the way around Rome and different places, sometimes in prison together. And as he travelled, I think it was good that the Apostle Paul had a doctor because he was always getting hurt and beaten up, so he would have been able to look after Paul. But not only was he a doctor, he was an investigator. He wanted to investigate all these things that have happened about Jesus and check out the evidence. But not only that, he was a writer because he was writing down all the things that people had seen and heard Jesus do and writing down all the things the Apostle Paul and the other apostles were doing as they were planting churches. And he was particularly interested in how the gospel, the good news about Jesus, was going all around the world so that anybody, no matter where you're from, can become a follower of Jesus. So thank you, Luke. So that's a whistle-stop tour of Luke. So what have we found out? Well, we know that he was a doctor. He was a traveller. And as he travelled around with the Apostle Paul, he would have looked after him. And he was an investigator. So at the beginning of Luke's Gospel, he says this, I myself have carefully investigated everything. And then he said this, He's a writer. I have decided to write an orderly account. And he's writing his gospel. He's writing Luke's gospel. And then he's writing his second book, which we call Acts, for a man called Theophilus. So you can say that, a bit of a strange name. His name was Theophilus. Okay. And he wanted Theophilus to know, or to know that he can be sure of all the things that he's been taught. He said, I've written these things so that you may know the certainty of the things you've been taught. So boys and girls, the things that you've been taught about Jesus, can we be sure? Yeah, we can be sure. Because people like Luke have carefully investigated and they've carefully written all these things down so we can know that we really can trust in Jesus. We really can be forgiven. And no matter where you're from, you can be a follower of Jesus. Well, Simon, uh, it's good to see you again. Boys and girls, it's good to see you again. But until next time, it's time to say goodbye. Thank you so much again, Steve. Uh, isn't it really interesting, boys and girls, uh, looking at these four different characters. One more to go next week. Um, but uh, the four gospel writers, completely different people, um, aren't they? Uh, all different views of the same uh, thing, the same person, Jesus. They're all with him, they're all there, and uh, it's really great to find out all their backgrounds and what they did, and, uh, but ultimately, how they all knew Jesus, they all followed Jesus, and uh, put him first uh, in their lives. So next week, we've got the final one, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So uh, really looking forward uh, to hearing uh, about him. But here we go, boys and girls. That's the uh, coming up to the end of this week's Discoverers at Home, um, episode two. Uh, but don't forget, send in your pictures, uh, your photos of your favourite meal, your favourite dinner, whatever that may be. And uh, we can have a look at those and uh, we can probably say, oh yeah, I like that, I don't like that. Uh, I know some things that I definitely don't like. Um, but there's some things that I do really enjoy. So uh, really good uh, to see them uh, as as well. And uh, Kazera Challenge, see what they're going to do next week uh, as well. So here we go, boys and girls, uh, we've got a song to finish with as always. Uh, but for now, uh, until next week, it's Tally Hose and Toodle Pips. <laughs>
humble shepherd boy became a king. God again. The Lord is good, the Lord is strong, and we will live our lives for Him. forget about the bonus story at the end Oof. well it's pretty tense finish uh, already from last week's episode very sad times uh, those orphans uh, wasn't it uh, having to live on the streets but then being taken and uh, forced into the workhouses uh, not very nice places at all not very nice people uh, at all was it but George Muller uh, he's there and he's going to do something about it, isn't he? So uh, let's find out what happens happens in uh, this week uh, with George Muller and these orphans. Charlie, taken to the workhouse? That's what some of the boys said. Oh, George, we have to do something. We have to get Charlie out of there. And that's exactly what I intend to do. Wagon! What's this? You wanted a roof over your head, didn't you? Well, this spike will help you pay for the privilege of having one. And Billy here, why, he's become an expert at using it. Ain't that right, Billy boy? William! You finished sweeping me room? Did you, Billy boy? Yeah. I said, did ya? Yeah, I did. Mr. Grimm! What? You have a visitor? You, teach Charlie here the ropes. Teach him the ropes? <laughs> <sighs> All right, so you take the spike like this and separate the rope. See? You try it. All right. But what's it for? It's used on ships to seal the gaps. Twice a day, a wagon comes to buy it. It's supposed to help pay for this place, but a lot of it ends up in Grimm's pockets. I'd give anything to get out of here. Me too. Charlie what? Well, I don't know his last name, but he's a You bad... don't know his last name, so... I reckon you ain't no relation. No, but our mission feeds him breakfast, and... Then what? 
sends him back to the streets to wander and scrounge and maybe steal. Boy's got to have a home, Mr. Muller. You got one for Coming him? Coming through! No, but... Then you got no business here. Now, if you please, I have orphans to attend to. Who's that? Just one of them creatures wants to help one orphan with breakfast. <laughs> all talk, like all the rest of them. All talk. A home for orphans? It's the only answer for Charlie and others like him. You know how much work we already have. But housing children, finding and clothing them, taking care of their medical needs, their education. And making them feel loved and secure. It's a huge task, George. Not to mention a lot of money. How could we possibly do it? We can't. But doesn't mean we shouldn't. I'm sorry, but I don't follow. Mary, do you remember when we made a decision not to receive a pastor's salary from our church? We decided to trust God for our needs, so as not to place a burden on our poor members. And have we lacked? Never. Henry, the thousands of Bible tracts that we print and distribute, have we ever stopped for lack of money? Well, no. We have been tested at times, but in reality, God has never failed us. A father to the fatherless is God in his holy dwelling. He sets the lonely in family. It would be a very challenging work, but God loves these children, and I believe he'll provide for them somehow. As do I. And I. Then it is settled. Let's begin by asking for God's help. For we shall need it every step of the way. Hmm. Says here, the Reverend George Muller's opened a local home for orphans. And that's he it here. Enough sweeping. Back to the spike. We don't want the boys getting any ideas. Right. Of course. Muller said, uh, We do not ask uh, directly for donations, but trust our Heavenly Father for every need, knowing he loves each of these children, blah, blah, blah. Goes on to say they can only take in 30 orphans and expect it to be full by today. Ah, he's doomed to failure. <laughs> Imagine an orphan house. You boy on prayer. <laughs> the workhouse is the only place for these good for nothing wretches. Prayer. <laughs>